Hey guys, I'm back and today we're doing we're doing a new kind of video. Um, I've never done <laughs> Sniffles, Sniffles McGee is in the background. He did schedule his sinus appointment, but he's gonna be sniffling back there. It drives me crazy. Uh, we're doing a video today that is something I was pretty apprehensive to do, but have been wanting to do. The reason I've been apprehensive to do this video is because I don't want people to come on this channel or see this video and think that I'm like this self-proclaimed plant doctor and like I know exactly why certain cosmetic damages happen to certain plants or whatever. Um, I don't. Sometimes when plants die or I have certain things that happen to plants, I don't freaking know what the cause is and I actually have one or two, I think I have two examples to show you of ones that I'm hoping to get your help with. But um, the reason that I've decided to do this video now is because I've curated this little bunch of plants that I've observed over a period of time and have sort of tested different things with that I can say in literally like 110% confidency. Confidency? <laughs> confidency. Is that a word? Confidency? I'm confident that the reasons that I have for this certain kind of cosmetic damage is what it is and maybe um, this video might help some of you guys that are trying to troubleshoot what might be going on with your plants. So just a disclaimer, not a plant doctor, not professional. Um, this is just based strictly on observation and experimentation and yeah, hopefully you find it useful. Let's just ease into this. I have one plant here. My beloved philodendron sp columbia i know i haven't shown this plant in a while uh this is the bottom cutting of my main plant which i will throw up here oh by the way the shelf absolutely barren because i'm filming a week of right now and i'm doing pest treatments or pest prevention on this shelf so I'm just filming double time today, so just ignore the barren wasteland behind me. But, oh yeah, I was showing you a photo. So here's the main plant. It is a plant that I've had for a good while now, but I feel like I've only been showing my other SP Columbia because it's like my favorite favorite right now. And this one has kind of taken a back seat ever since I chopped it, but she's, she's alive and well. She's still with us. But I wanted to highlight some of the cosmetic damage that you can see on this plant. So. Luckily, I have a few leaves to show you. So this lovely lady right here, you can kind of see it's got like yellow, oh God, the white melons is going crazy again. You can see, don't do that, it's getting all blown out. Don't do that, don't do that. Okay, regulate, there we go. Okay, so um, you can see it's got sort of this yellow halo around the edges and some really yellow patchy parts right here and sort of at the bottom. This one is tricky to sort of see which is which kind of damage, but this leaf is the product of being blasted under a grow light plus having spider mites. So this plant had spider mites for, I wanna say, I don't know, it's, it's probably been going on month 11 now or probably a year. It still has spider mites to this day. I literally can see some on this leaf, even though I have been treating it like crazy. I don't know if you can see the webbing in that sinus, but it's, yeah, it's just covered in mites and it's kind of gross that I'm holding this, but all for the sake of the video. This one was the specimen that I was testing out under different grow lights and this leaf here, this, this leaf, this leaf, and this leaf. These were all grown under strong grow lights and what I mean by strong grow lights are anything stronger than 10 watts. Um, this was grown under a 24 watt light and you can see it was just very unhappy. The edges started bleaching pretty much immediately after I got it under there. Same with this one. This one's not as prominent. It's weird because I can see it in person but it's not picking up on the viewfinder. But there's just a very, very slight yellow tinge of yellow um, around the edges. But because of where this is positioned, the light was here. This one was sort of off to the side, so it was really only hitting it like right in this corner. But then this one was under the light and you can see it's like, <laughs> you can see it's like really, really yellow. But I would say that the majority of this damage is spider mites. And you can see the mites, hopefully you can see it in the little, um, what is it? In its little butt cracks 
in all the little ridges there are little tiny spider mites so all of this damage that you see right here that is pest damage that's not bleaching you can see it kind of has like a texture to it it's splotchy um, because that's where like the mites would have gathered but around the edges where it's just sort of like turning yellow. Poor Vince is like choking back there. It's, yeah, that's from bleaching from the light. So this leaf was a little bit more tricky. I moved this plant from my plant room to one of these top shelves when this one was starting to emerge and it was totally fine. And then I did a little reshift on this shelf and I moved it under here. And do you guys see underneath, there's like this little 10 watt bar right there. So literally after one day of being under that light, which is again, it's only 10 watts, it just bleached it like crazy. You can hopefully again, see how yellow it is compared to like this side here, which it was on sort of on the side. So this right side wasn't as much underneath the grow light as this left side. When it was on the top shelf, it was completely green. It was totally fine. And then literally one day of being under that grow light, it managed to turn it really yellow. I've noticed with the, um, actually, I think this is a good time to tell you that apparently this is not being called the Philodendron SP Columbia anymore. It's the Philodendron I think philodendron sp el guapo uh, which means handsome and uh yeah it's just gonna take me a while to get used to that i'm not i don't really like that name i don't feel like it suits this plant very much emergent leaves on these el guapos are very very sensitive so if this was fully hardened um and i didn't move it there while it was still soft i don't think that the bleaching would have been this bad i feel like it would have bleached, but maybe over a longer period of time and not so instantaneously. It was literally less than 24 hours and it turned yellow. So if you have your philodendron, almost said philodendron SB Columbia, you have your El Guapo in like a greenhouse or a controlled environment where there are grow lights, I would suggest you take it out because I see a lot of, um, people's plants on Instagram, on Facebook that have it in grow tents and they all look the same. They're all like bright yellow. They have like the yellow tint around the edges, but it's weird because I have also seen some where it's in a, a grow tent and it has no bleaching at all. Again, I don't know what kind of light situation they're giving it, but um, all I can say is that every single El Guapo that I've grown under artificial light or under, not under, but in like a, <coughs> in like a strong light is uh has always gotten bleached so now that i know that i'm growing all of them away from windows away from grow lights and they've just been uh i don't know they've been really good so i don't know if i should show you maybe i'll just show you a little clip from my repot so i don't have to take it out again gosh my arm is hurting this one has been growing mostly not under a grow light there's a few leaves on this plant that were grown under a grow light which you can kind of see a yellow tint um, around the edges but it's not as bad but for the most part um, they've just been growing under sort of like diffused light or just light that it gets from I don't know like a window from far away or like the uh, what is it the beams <laughs> just from what's being casted from the lights around it and it's not really underneath the grow light and the leaves are really dark they're really healthy it doesn't push out as much EFN as uh, this one did when it was under grow lights. And so I feel like the El Guapo is just one of those plants that really enjoy like shade. Imagine it like in the forest or in the jungle or whatever, and it's just growing along the forest floors. It's being shaded by other larger plants and that's how they stay nice and green. So I will never grow any of my El Guapos under grow lights again or near like a window because when you get that nice, rich, dark color, it just really brings out like that beautiful texture of the plant. Um, so yeah, give that a try. If you're struggling with the, the yellowing on that plant, I feel like I've seen a lot of people say that it's a nutrient deficiency. What the heck? A nutrient deficiency but in my experience it's just purely been a light thing okay so now now i'm being blinded the next one is a very sad one and i have not shown this plant 
on my uh, channel for a while because I feel like I'm still grieving the loss of what used to be, but I have not given up because it is one of my biggest, most precious babies. And that would be a plant that I just, oh my God, I feel like I shoved this plant down your throat all of 2022 or was it 2021 2022 i think i i was just like yeah every other video i was like look at my glorious um but this is her now she's not she's not happy um i chopped off pretty much the entire bottom half because i wanted to just start over on a new pole it actually did look like this before i chopped it though and the reason that it looks like this is because this plant was violently violently attacked by both spider mites and thrips at the same time and during that attack it was just pushing out so much efn so my understanding of efn um is i mean it has m multiple functions right it's, it's to attract ants they're attracted to the sweetness of the sap and it keeps away bad bugs but i don't have ants so there is no one to come collect all of this efn but i have noticed too, that um, plants push out EFN when they're under some kind of stress, whether that be like environmental stress or like health stress, whatever. So I do feel like this plant just pushed out an excess of it during that time when it was just being attacked severely by those pests and it hasn't really come out of that fight or flight mode and it's just constantly fighting. But you can see on the back how sticky and sappy it is. It's just completely overtaken the backs of these leaves and I wash this thing down weekly. I try and remove as much of the EFN as possible, but it just comes back. And I have I like have friends who have experience with the Glorious and they say they have the same issues. You can see um, mostly spider mite damage and that is characterized by sort of this like dusty finish of the plant. I don't know if you guys can tell, but like the texture of this plant should not look like this. It's almost like there's a layer of dust, like a white dust or a white film, and that would be from spider mites. This yellowing around the, the edges is from literally um, just a lack of moisture it's a large plant and sometimes i would just forget to water it and it would just dry out completely so it would start to sort of yellow around the edges and then it just kind of hardens off like this and then also if you guys can see this like yellow sort of cluster of dots up here that's also from spider mites that's spider mite damage i don't know if you can see here but there's this like what word am I thinking of? What I, I don't know enough adjectives, but that is also from spider mites. There's not a ton of thrips damage on this plant because it was more so um, attacked by spider mites than thrips, but you can see some of the thrips damage that it left behind. So in this corner, you... Okay, what are my fingers? <laughs> in this corner, you can kind of see how it's discolored to this like coppery, rusty color. And there's also these like dark brown dots uh, for thrip uh, that was left by the thrips. And yeah, I did have like a little cluster of thrips right here in this corner and they were just like, I don't know what they, I think they were having like a town hall meeting or something, but it was strange. They were all just clustered together and my hands are so sticky. This is just classic damage from, I would say mostly spider mites and an excess of EFN. She still has not pushed out a new leaf, which is weird because she's been my fastest grower and this one did still have a root system when I repotted it and it has grown new roots as well. But I think, I think she's, I think she's just dormant. She's like just trying to recover from what happened to her. She's, she's in therapy right now. She's getting the help she needs. So, sorry, my hands are so sticky. I do have a better example of thrips to show you um, with another plant, but I just wanted to show you this because the EFN will burn through the leaves and you can see it through like all of these like yellow spots. The yellow spots are like burn marks from the EFN. It just burns right through it. 
some people have said that this is like a fungal thing and I'm not sure if it like goes hand in hand when you have EFN with a fungal thing but I would imagine if there was some kind of like fungus going around that it would adhere pretty easily to EFN kind of similar to the Thelmatophyllum xanadu or the philodendron what is it tiger tooth philodendron jungle boogie how it gets those like really rusty spots on it and people say it's like copper rust fungus or something this is not quite like that um, you can literally match up the EFN dots to the burn on the front if you observe it carefully enough but yeah right now she's my problem child um, she still has spider mites and we're just kind of dealing with it but at least I have something to show you and if you have similar spots or similar damage or you have a plant that is just randomly starting to push out more EFN I would give it a really close look and make sure there's no spider mites because they can be super 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 hard to spot okay so I have two plants to show you in this little category this one is my rehab anthurium vitarifolium I have one two three wait yeah, I have three Vitar foliums. This one is my saddest one. But the damage that I wanted to show you on this plant is mostly these ends here. This is just classic shit I forgot to water. I would say especially on anthuriums, um, when you allow them to dry out for too long, they really don't like it and they will immediately start crisping around the edges and this is i don't even know why this is on the plant still i should really just chop this off but she's like she's she's crispy she's she's no longer with us sometimes i just like take a scissor to it and i chop it off but other times i just peel it off like this so yeah nope there's not a single ounce of hydration in there the yellowing of this plant is actually i would say mostly from spider mites this one was attacked pretty violently as well it didn't leave too many spots but there is this sort of like again dusty white texture left on these straps but all of this damage down here is just from a lack of watering and this one used to be in soil. I chopped it. This is the top cutting from that plant. The bottom cutting is somewhere over there. And I transferred it to pond because of how thirsty it was. The soil that it was in, I think, was hydrophobic for a long time. And I just waited too long to repot it. And so it was going these periods of just like being super hydrated. The moss was really wet or the soil was really wet. And then it would dry out completely and just be dry for a long period of time. And that's when these these ends started crisping up. Another plant that I can show you that has suffered from, I would I want to say inconsistent watering is this forgetii. Again, characterized by the crisping at the tips and on the edges. This one is also in soil with drainage holes and I can tell you exactly when this happened. It was it was when it was still in the plant room and I was just like not really good about my watering. It was so hot in there. I was having a hard time keeping up with my watering when all of my anthuriums were in the plant room. And this was one that I just, I neglected. I find this one to be actually pretty thirsty. I'm not sure if it's because my soil is too chunky, but this one looks like a, a denser mix. Like I don't see as many of my amendments in there as I normally would have. Eventually I want to move this probably to a vessel with no drainage. I'll still use soil, but I'll just make sure that I have no drainage holes on it because there were roots down here that were quite healthy and then they just dried up from when I didn't give it any water. I'm seriously like I'm not kidding when I tell you that I kill more plants with drainage holes than without and I just feel like this plant would be so much happier if it had no drainage holes because it would hold in that water for longer I could keep a reserve of water down there and not worry about it but this is not fungal this is literally just me being a bad plant parent and not consistently keeping some level of moisture in in this plant so Really quick, just wanted to show you that it's nothing, it's no pest, no nutrient deficiency. It's not a humidity thing. Um, this one has actually done pretty well in lower humidity. It just did not appreciate when 
I didn't give it water, which is a fair thing to be upset about. <laughs> This one is a good example to show you for a plant that needs a good amount of light. At least my specimen does. The reason this is a good example is because you guys can see that all of the leaves here that don't have white on it, because it does it every other. You can see all of these leaves here are highly variegated and these ones are mostly green. If this was some sort of watering issue or like nutrient issue, all of these leaves should be looking somewhat sad. Like the whole plant would tell you like, hey, something's wrong, right? But um, the reason that I know this is a light thing is because pretty much up until here, all of these leaves down here were grown in my, um, my tent. And my tent is my most lit, <laughs> so lit. Um, wow, that was not cool. It's the area of my plant room that has the most controlled lights. It has five 10 watt bars in there coming from all angles, has reflective walls. It's just the lights bouncing off everywhere. And this plant was super happy in there. Uh, not super happy. It was happier in there. And all of the white leaves were just staying white. I was not having issues with the white parts melting or turning brown. I had none of those issues. Now, I took it out of the tent because I converted my tent to my rehabs and plants that have really, really bad spider mites. I just kind of want to keep everything isolated. So I had to kick this one out and I put it in my Millsville wide. In my Millsville wide, I had one or I had two 10 watt bars in there and I kind of had it. I kind of had it over in the corner and there were other plants above it that were shading some of that light. And within, I want to say, two weeks of being there, all of these leaves were just turning brown. And I thought, okay, is it a root thing? Like, is it a watering thing? But no, like all of these leaves here that don't have white variegation are just perfectly fine. So, ow. I remember that I put the plant in the Millsville Wide when this one was pretty new. And yeah, probably within three days, it started turning brown. So I was like, okay, this is a good leaf to experiment with, right? Because it's got a lot of white, has more white than this one. But when um, this one was in the, in the Millsville Wide, I switched out the lights. I put, I left one 10 bar, 10 bar. I left one 10 watt light in there and then I moved one of my 24 watt Monios lights in there. I put it higher um, in the cabinet so that nothing was blocking the light. And so far, this one has not browned at all. And all of these have not browned any more than they already have. You guys can kind of see here, like the brown has taken over almost this entire, like the entire white part of this leaf. Whereas on this one, it's just kind of stopped and it's like hardening off now and it looks like it's gonna crust over pretty soon and not bleed into the plant a lot more. So I know now that pretty much for the entire time that I own this plant, I'm gonna have to give it some light. I don't know if it's one of those things that can be maybe acclimatized to lower light, but I'm not, I don't really want to experiment and do that right now just because I don't know, I don't like looking at this plant now. Like all of this browning on it is just kind of an eyesore to me. And I I don't know, I feel like I've made such good progress just with sizing up this plant and finally getting these pinations and these fenestrations. And it's rooted into this tree fern fiber pole now. I just extended the pole. So I don't really wanna chop it just for the sake of not seeing these leaves. So we're just gonna wait it out. And yeah, I'm glad that I finally sort of cracked the reason why these were browning because I, I don't know, this has been one of those projects that I've been pretty invested in. Um, I really wanna see these leaves get bigger. I felt like I was on a good track and then I moved it and then this started happening and I was like, oh crap, here we go again. Um, another failed project. It's kind of strange, like the leaves are getting bigger but then I lose these <laughs> pinations like this one. This one is gonna be larger than this one. I can tell just based on how big it is right now, but there are no pinations. It's all just these little pinhole fenestrations, which are really cute, but I don't, I don't know. I don't freaking understand this plant. I feel like some people can size these up so fast. And then there's people like me who are just constantly dealing with these tiny little dweeby leaves, but 
we're gonna be patient we're gonna let her do her thing so if you guys are noticing on your variegated plants that you're seeing some of this browning um, I would suggest getting it into higher light or stronger light and also um, maybe up your fertilization uh, specifically nitrogen because nitrogen is important to the production of chlorophyll in the plant so I've been feeding this one TPS what is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? Epiphytes Delight and also Marfil. Kind of giving it a combination of all three. Um, I kind of switch up week to week. I am fertilizing both in the substrate and in this pole. And uh, yeah, I think that has also been helping with keeping the white. But unfortunately, I couldn't save these guys down here. <laughs> Another one that I want to show you that is an example of light is this freaking monstera adamsonii aurea variegated variegated why did i say it like that variegated i had a very good relationship with this plant when i first got it and then one day i just lost it we we just we had a good rhythm we were like doing the tango and then we just like had a misstep and now we've just never found our rhythm again but i can say this one did not appreciate being pulled away from again the strong light this was also in my tent and it was literally like two inches away from the grow light did not burn at all it actually liked it um but the second that i took it out there the second i took it out of the tent it just hated me but i will also say in the tent i would notice that it would melt like this if it wasn't also close to some source of airflow so both light and airflow has been like crucial in keeping the variegation healthy on this plant otherwise it just loves to melt and i know some people have this experience with the monstera aurea as well you know i've told people to try giving it more light and more airflow and there's been like two people that told me that it does help with the browning on their plant um, I'm not sure if there's like a type of nutrient that you could give it to maybe prevent it from doing that. I would also imagine maybe nitrogen, but I, I'm not 100% sure. But I took this one out of the tent because I didn't want it around the plants that are in there right now. And I have chopped it a bunch of times. This is actually just the top cutting from what was left. I had like a huge bottom cutting that I just chopped. I just couldn't deal with it. But yeah, this... This is just looking really, really sad because it's also in my Millsville Wide right now, which has literally no fans in it at all, like basically no airflow. Um, it does have a lot of light, but it's probably not sitting close enough to the light for it to sustain like really healthy leaves. But the reason I haven't given it that kind of prime real estate is because I'm just... I'm just not super into this plant. Um, there was a point in time where I was starting to kind of like it or like tolerate it and it was growing really nicely but i don't know it's just not it's just not a plant that i gravitate toward it's not a plant that i love i much i much prefer the green adansonii or an escaletto for as much that this plant requires there's not enough that i get back from it so that's why it looks like this now because i'm just sort of at my wit's end and if it wasn't given to me by jing i probably would have yeeted it into the river by now but she's managed to she's managed to live another day next plant on the roster is my philodendron white princess and she's actually a very beautiful specimen she has a lot of pink in the stem and i actually got some pink on this plant for the first time here but you can also see how much it's melting. At first I thought it was a uh, thrips or some kind of pest, but this one has been spider mite free for a while now. Um, but the reason it's been spider mite free is because I've been spraying this thing like crazy with my Safer's miticide. I'm going back and forth between as a I'm going back and forth between Azimax and the Safer spray because I don't want the mites to get too comfy. I want to switch things up on them and make sure they're always on their on their toes this one just did not like being sprayed so i sprayed this one maybe three days ago while this one was still emerging and she is melting 
and at first i was confused because i was like why like why is this happening i've never had something like this happen with that spray before but then i sprayed this plant my philodendron esmeralda dense af uh, she does not have spider mites i don't think she does but i did a preventative spray literally two days ago or yesterday and this emergent leaf was completely fine before the spray she was pristine and now the next day don't know if you can see it but she's got little tiny melty spots on her can you see it seriously this is annoying there's like little spots on it from the spray and it's become like translucent like it just burned through the leaf and it's giving that same sort of texture as the white princess like it's literally just melting luckily i didn't spray this leaf too much because in the shower it was faced towards the wall and so it was just kind of getting some overspray i think that if i directly sprayed this it would have melted even more but the texture of the leaf that i can see maybe i can do it with my iphone and give you guys like a better a better look at it okay so hopefully you can see what i'm talking about now do you guys see those little spots all over it? Like where I would have sprayed it? Like right here in this corner. Seriously, it's so hard to capture on camera, but I can see completely through the leaf. Like if I took a pin to it, I feel like it would just pierce right through because it's become paper thin. Why isn't it focusing? Oh, there. Don't mind the pudge hair, but yeah, this was not on the plant yesterday and it wasn't until I sprayed and I'm pretty sure in like two or three days, it's going to look exactly like my, my white princess. Luckily, the damage has been very minimal with this new leaf, which is so pretty. At least now I know to be a little bit more, a little bit more cautious when I'm using that spray because it is a more potent spray than it's sister which is the safer's insecticidal soap i think they have the same active ingredients but the the yellow bottle is just more concentrated which is why people have recommended it for spider mites probably not going to be using that spray anymore when i have an emergent leaf but luckily it's been okay on the completely hardened leaves now there is other kind of damage on this plant which is something i kind of wanted your help on and i'm gonna go grab another example this seems to only happen in the royal family at least to me but this is my beautiful pink princess which i love so much i feel like it's such a great specimen like it has beautiful beautiful variegation these really really dark leaves but i am getting that damage like look at this it looks like it's been like burnt to a crisp same with this leaf here and it's strange because it emerges just fine and it hardens off and i don't see it until it's like fully hardened it like develops after i think jing's theory was that um, on the pink princess or any of the royals that if it takes too long to come out of the petiolar sheath that this ends up happening and i don't know i i mean i guess i can see it but at the same time I just feel like it would be really weird for this kind of damage to happen just from staying in the sheath for too long. It literally looks like it's like burnt, like I put it over a freaking stove or something. So the, the damage is pretty similar, like on this leaf and then like on this one. I don't know. Uh, hive mind would love your your input and thoughts on that but i just i wanted to show these two plants the esmeral dense and this one because if you're seeing something like this happen where it becomes super translucent and like this brown color and literally feels like it's like melting into a liquid i would go back and think if you've ever sprayed it with some kind of chemical like a pest spray while the leaf was emerging if not i have also seen this happen on plants where when the leaf was emerging there was like water that got trapped inside of the leaf and just sat in there for too long and just kind of melted it 
um, but I know that was not the case with this one because this one had emerged and it was like starting to unfurl and the, it didn't have any problems coming out of the, the petiolar sheath, but I did spray it with that pest spray while it was still really brand new, still really brand new, <laughs> while it was still brand new. So um, I know it's from that. So be careful with these pest sprays that we're using. Sorry if I'm like speaking incoherently right now. I probably should have filmed this video on a day where I wasn't feeling so flustered. I'm filming week of, I'm filming week of, and um, I'm just kind of zonked. When you film for like four or five days straight, you literally become a zombie. So, uh, Hopefully I do this video justice. And if I don't, we will try again. Um, but anyway, this is my Monstera Albo. Well, it's not mine technically. This was the last remaining plant from the mother Albo that I was caring for since 2000, what was it, 2020. Um, I gave it back to my friend. I propagated a million, bajillion, bajillion times. I've managed to keep one baby. I don't know if I'm gonna be giving this back to her. Or if I'm just gonna say, fuck it, I'll just be an elbow owner. I don't know, I'm not 100% convinced that I need an elbow, but she's here. And the reason I wanna show this to you is because she sat in shit. And what I mean by that is that she had thrips badly. I love that I have this example to show you guys because this is just classic, classic thrips damage. If you spot this color at all on a plant, the first thing you should look for is thrips. Look for those little fuckers. You're gonna find them, I swear. They leave this very coppery color. Um, I would say mostly on the abaxials, the back sides of the leaf. It does sort of um, come through sometimes on the front, like you can see here, but typically they're gonna leave it right on the booties. It's really prominent on the backs. So again, the brown rusty color there's this texture of like spot. It's almost like it has goosebumps or something, but that's Thripsis's. It doesn't have thrips anymore. You guys can see like the new leaf is completely unscathed. Even the oldest leaf doesn't look like it has that much thrips damage. Um, there's a little tiny bit, but not a lot, but you can kind of tell there's like a sort of rusty, rusty tint to it. But this one, completely fine. Um, she's been treated a million bajillion times and she needs a repot bad. She br she's busting out of these pants. So yeah, thrips damage. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. The last plant on this list is this Philodendron Soderini. Um, I used to have an entire greenhouse of Soderoi, Soderini, Majestic, but it became a little bit too high maintenance for me to maintain. So. I had to be realistic in my expectations for myself and I got rid of pretty much all of them besides three. So here's one remaining one. And I was actually growing this plant pretty well. You can see these bottom leaves are like really pretty and fully formed and nice. And then as I've started to neglect it again, it's just pushing out these sickly, nasty, terrible looking leaves getting stuck in the caterpillar, And I talked about this in my easiest philodendrons video where I showed you my Soderini that has gotten so big now. Um, but this plant, I am convinced, cannot grow healthily without the use of CalMag. If you are not using CalMag yet, I highly recommend you do. It's a great fertilizer to use in conjunction with your current fertilizer. Um, right now I'm just using it at a diluted strength, about a fourth of the recommended um, recommended dosing, what? Recommended amount. <laughs> I'm so tired. Um, I'm using it at a quarter strength and I fertilize every single week, but this one needed a little bit more than that. I've um, When I was growing my Soderini, it did not really appreciate just the diluted amount. I had to like mix its own little batch almost every week and I would make sure to fertilize the pole with CalMag, fertilize the substrate with CalMag, and even do a foliar spray. And that was the only way that I got it out of this really strange, uh, what I call it a preteen phase where it's just 
awkward and sickly looking. So yeah, if you have, I'm not saying this is um, solely for the Soderini, but if you are noticing that some of your leaves um, are coming out really mangled or they're just having trouble coming out of the, the sheath in general, if your humidity is fine, your humidity levels are fine, um, I would look into it maybe being a nutrient deficiency. And if it is, I would recommend using CalMag. I just wanted to show you this really quickly because the last time that I filmed my video where I was showing examples of like a sick Soderini, I didn't have anything to show you because all of my Soderinis were actually growing pretty well up until that point. But this one, yeah, has definitely seen better days and now I'm able to show you how quickly it can revert back to its nasty self if not given the proper care and proper nutrients. So CalMag, CalMag, CalMag. It's not expensive. You don't have to get anything fancy. You can literally just get whatever's the cheapest on Amazon. I feel like all of the CalMags perform pretty much the same. I will link the two CalMags that I have been using in the description of this video. Um, no pressure, you don't have to use the link. If you can find it somewhere cheaper, by all means do that. But Please give your plants CalMag if you are just noticing stunts in growth and just weird mangled growth. I feel like CalMag has helped me become a better plant parent and I just, I will never go back to not using it. So this one, <laughs> I'm not giving up just yet, but I really, I need to take better care of it. But at least now I have something to show you. So. That's actually it for all the plants. I know that there are like a million bajillion other things that can go wrong in this hobby that will lead to different kinds of cosmetic damages and maybe down the road because I know I'm gonna get there because there is never a point in time where my collection is just looking pristine. Um, I don't strive for that, it happens. I have too many freaking plants. But now that this is pretty much my job now, um, I actually got that question. Uh, YouTube is not my full-time thing. I am pretty much working full-time hours for YouTube, but I still have my business and I am still doing client work and stuff like that. So this is not like my full-time gig, but if it was, I still don't think my plants would be perfect. But yeah, I just have too many plants and now that it's part of my job, I don't feel like I'm in a place where I should just like cut the collection down to like 10 plants because then I have nothing to show you. But anyway, um, yeah, like I was saying, I know that there are 10 million bajillion things that can happen with these plants that can uh, lead to different cosmetic damages, but these are just the ones that I have to show you now. Um, like I said, because I know myself as a plant parent, I will 100% have more things to show you later. Um, hopefully I can show you some definite flat mite damage on my Hoyas. Um, I still have yet to use my microscope that I got from Amanda. I'm just a little bit terrified to use it because I don't want to see them, but I know they're there. So yeah, uh, I hope you found this useful. Again, I just want to remind you that this is, this is my YouTube channel. This is not a university. This is not an online class. Um, we're not, we're not, we're not getting an education here. So everything that I've said in this video and every freaking video on this channel this is based on my observations, my experience, my my own research. Nothing I say is Bible. It's not to say that I don't know anything about plants. I don't know everything about plants, but I know some things about plants. But always do your own research. Make sure you're always, you know, conducting your own experiments and making sure not to like hastily like go into something thinking, oh, she said this, so now I'm gonna do this to my whole collection. Please don't let your entire collection be in my hands. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate this because this video comes off to me, like the subject of this video comes off as teachy and I never want to be like teachy on this channel, but I had plants that had cosmetic damages. I know what they came from and I just thought I'd share them with you and hopefully maybe it'll help you guys diagnose some of the things going on in your collection. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.